There's this famous American movie called The Karate Kid in where the um, hero character is tormented and bullied by a group of karate club um, young men who were under the tutelage of a rather arrogant and hostile uh, teacher um, themselves. And this leads to the hero um, finding uh, his Mr. Miyagi, who agrees to teach him in the means of karate as a means of self-defense, but um, further, the the teacher, the Mr. Miyagi, goes to the arrogant um, other, you know, the arrogant karate club teacher, and you know, tries to make a peace offering, saying, "Hey, let's not bully the uh, kids." And they finally agree upon that uh, only if the hero uh, def- defeats um, his students in a looks like a, some sort of championship contest that the that they would uh, stop bullying. And as the story goes down, the <clears throat> the protagonist use all kinds of um, underhanded, unethical, and dirty tricks to win, but in the end they lose to the hero. The reason that I bring up this story is that it is parallel to the kind of attitudes have seen and are currently seeing in the American uh, Japanese cultural interpretative centers that are normally called Zen centers, or they'll call them Zendos, where it is permanently young men, and there will be a mid-age uh, male teacher who, you know, shaves their head and wears the uh, appropriate Japanese costume for the religious sect that they are claiming to be teaching Zen from. And a lot of these young men really view this as, you know, I'm going to get Zen, I'm going to get enlightenment, and then I'm going to have wisdom and power. And uh, there's a lot of thoughts that um, I think are imparted from these teachers to these young men about how special they are and how unique they are and how elite they are. And this sets up a very an atmosphere within the the zen center uh of elitism that all the young men feel they are special and the young men tend to adopt the style of the teacher a lot of them will cut their hair short um a lot of them will start you know they will go through the ranks that the teacher has set up uh, which is the, the rakasus and the various levels of responsibility within the, the Zendo and the Zen Center. And they will even start taking on a lot of the Japanese Zen mannerisms and a lot of the Japanese cultural mannerisms that, re- honestly, they only exist in Japan, and even then... They only exist within the temple cultures. They're, they are so foreign to the American culture. And even in popular Japanese culture, it is, these, these sort of mannerisms are not really seen. So what ends up going on is these young men start to look down on any, anybody else who is outside of their system, outside of their teacher. Uh, they start to view their uh, that the teacher's lineage, you know, because the teacher will always claim lineage. I have the lineage of X, Y, Z, and and they will sort of be drilled in their head, almost brainwashed to a degree about how special and elite their lineage is. And so you end up with this sort of Zen snob, but even worse, you end up with the Zen bully, who. Anybody, irregardless of where they are from, who is not their teacher and not within their teacher's lineage, is simply viewed as lesser 
and they will mercilessly attack them and claim that uh, these people who, who speak Zen, that they have no authority, that they have no right to speak, that they are untrained, and it, the list goes on of what they will say to belittle and demean anybody who is not their teacher or not within their teacher's lineage. And this is sort of what is has become of Zen in the West. It is literally the karate club uh, Zen centers. And, the, you know, I will speak a little bit about what's going on within the current karate clubs. There's, it is almost funny how it runs parallel to Zen because in the karate clubs, you also will see young arrogant men who believe that their teacher trained with it's another teacher, generally they will try to trace it back to a Japanese or a famous uh, Asian um, teacher who maybe won a tournament or came from some prestigious school uh, either in China or Japan or Korea. And they will, they will try to say that they have the authentic teachings, that their teacher taught them the true karate. This debate between karate students of whose teacher is more authentic and whose teacher is, uh, you know, comes from a more prestigious lineage never ends. And this is something that uh, is parallel in Zen, where you will see people talk about, well, my teacher came from this particular lineage and it's different than your teacher who came from that lineage. And there tends to be this ego jockeying about the lineage. Uh, and it, I just find the whole thing completely ridiculous. This sort of ego gnashing around lineages and around pedigrees does nothing for the student. It is just nothing more than a ego building, self building, uh, delusion and when I try to tell these young men that everything that they see as Zen everything that they know as Zen everything that they are saying as Zen is nothing but delusion nothing but suffering nothing but error and folly of course what do you think happens do you think that they bow down and thank me for my generous offering of compassion and dharma and vow to make amends? Oh, hell no. First thing they do is attack me. They will cry out loud that I do not know what I speak of, that I am deluded, that everything that I say is basically wrong. That's the first thing they say. And then, of course, will come the accusations that, oh, this guy has no training, this guy is not our teacher, this guy is not within our lineage. And so goes the whole attack on one's character to demean what I have to say so that they don't have to listen to it. It's literally the image of one sticking one's fingers in one's ears and going la 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 I can't hear you because they don't want to hear wisdom they don't want to hear the fact that they are brainwashed deluded engaged in delusions speaking delusions acting out delusionally creating suffering in deep error and folly this problem is not something that I have, I'm the first to bring up by no means. This is a problem that has existed within the American Zen cultural interpretative centers for, well, I would say going back to about the 70s when Zen started to first come over, mostly brought over by these more nationalistic Japanese men who have rather curious and troublesome backgrounds in themselves. This is something that uh, most Zen students tend to not want to look at too deeply. Uh, they mostly just believe whatever the teacher told them. 
Um, and they didn't look further than that. And in some cases, it was impossible to look further than that. They, sometimes the teacher would talk about places and situations and other teachers who they studied with where it's impossible to verify any of that stuff. And also the resources of the students to actually do their own verification and research into the teacher is impossible because they just don't have the resources or the time or the ability to find out what's really going on there. So they just believe. And this is something that has led to become a bit of a problem where people just assume that, well, he's Asian and he's teaching Buddhism so therefore everything he's saying must be the truth well that's completely ridiculous to think that to think that that nobody would come over and just lie nobody would just make up things but that's exactly what did happen many of the Zen teachers that did come over basically were nobodies uh, or in some cases uh, like Deshi Maru had to leave Japan because they, their activities during World War II were questionable, as in to what exactly did they do in Japan during the war? Where were they? And those were unanswered questions by these men. So the American Zen students who were somehow brainwashed by these men, they were somehow led into these, this karate club-like belief that of what Zen is, tended to carry on this nationalistic attitude, this nationalistic Japanese Zen, even well after the Japanese, uh, the original Japanese founder of the American Cultural Interpretation Center passed on. And now you, we end up with more of the this you know, the best I can call it would be a fictional lineage in where the American Zen student who trained under the now passed on Japanese nationalistic teacher kind of embellishes and enhances the lineage and the stories and enhances their own stories to, you know, to talk about their own experiences and what they think the lineage means and how special it is and how they were given great responsibility. And they bring in these young men. And like I said, it is mostly young men. And they impart onto them of how elite and how special they are to be learning this Zen from them who they receive this special Zen and this special lineage from this great teacher and this is a enhanced, embellished story that is being told to these young men. And these young men buy it because they they want to be special. There are, you know, a lot of people who grow up in this world are nothing more than ordinary. And it's sort of like, hmm, there's nothing special in their life. But yet they find this teacher and now they are special and they're being told they're special. Well, I think if you are been paying attention to any of my videos and anything I have said, you'll you'll start to realize what I'm talking about are cults. And that a lot of the American Zen cultural interpretative centers are nothing more than cults. And a lot of these cults uh, tend to attract young men, especially young men who are kind of lost, young men who don't really have any real sense of, um, of, of an identity for themselves. They just sort of are coasting along with the po popular culture, and they're just questioning what, what is their place within the culture, what is their own... Um, what is, their, what is the meaning that they have within their culture? So this is what cults do. They, they look for the lonely. They look for the lost. And they, they give these people a false identity, um, a false family. 
And in fact, they will even start telling these uh, these young men that the Zen the Zen Center is their family, that the the Zendo is their home, that the teacher is their father, that he knows best, and that they should be basically doing what he says. And a lot of times, the teacher puts on a very strong front, stern, fathery like image, because these a lot of these students they have weak fathers. Their fathers were. Um, you know they were there they were presents but they were they were weak within their own son's lives and they were not really able to offer much wisdom or much uh, advice um and you kind of see that with these young men who sometimes they would even bring their mothers and fathers to the zen, to the zen center to visit to you know oh you're going to be ordained into the into the sangha oh or you're going to be uh, attaining something or you're at a family day and it was very apparent that you know the the parents of these children were weak they they didn't really have much to offer um because their parents themselves were or kind of lost and kind of not really knowing who they were not not really having a sense of purpose or identity themselves so these children end up in these cults and these teachers, um, like I said, a lot of them themselves victims of a cult, tend to just do unto others that was done unto them. So is it Zen? Are the uh, that's what's just get down to it? Are these young men actually learning Zen? And I have been pointing out through all my videos that the answer is no. And I know a lot of these young men who may be listening to this podcast or shaking their head and disagreeing with me and saying that my teacher is teaching true Zen, I would not be too sure if they are. Sitting Zazen in a Zendo, I've already discussed the fact that that is not Zen, that that is performance art. And the fact that the longer that you sit in performance art and are able to maintain it and you keep coming back and sitting in performance art is not enlightenment is not zen that's only showing your dedication to the teacher and you'll be rewarded for that as the teacher will say aha you're coming and you're sitting zazen and you are showing up and and if you continue to show up be aware they'll probably make you practice leader or even let you start speaking so-called dharma talks such things are known to happen at these places like this. And you will hear them talk about things like, how many sessions have you sat? How many retreats have you attended? Did you go to Rohatsu? Did you go to this thing? Did you go to that thing? And they start wearing these meditative intensive retreats as badges as ranks you might as well start giving out colored belts at that point and some of them do they'll have different color rakusus that's the the bib that they wear around their necks and the different colors indicate the different ranks within the zen center just like in the karate clubs with the different colored belts and these ranks are given out to these students mostly basically on seniority and how many sessions they've attended. And this is essentially what happens. And if, you, if the teacher feels that they have a loyal enough student, a student who has professed their undying loyalty to the, the teacher and, of course, the lineage, because the teacher is the embodiment of the lineage, because they, that, that is what they have brainwashed the students to believe. The teacher then will empower the student with the holy Dharma transmission, which is nothing more than a neo-feudalistic holdover from Japan, and granting this student to become a teacher within the lineage, and you have the permission to teach other students under my name and under the bannership of this lineage, which is exactly what you see within the karate clubs. 
<laughs> you just go off a young man and open an, a branch center and make my fortunes bigger and make my domain wider. It's it's nothing. It's a joke. It's 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 nothing more than that. It's nothing more than karate club uh, zen. And it's this is basically what um, zen has become in the West, and it's real sad. I had a, a, a senior friend of mine who uh, is a was uh, I would call him a an, an absolute Zen master who was talking he was laughing at the fact that a lot of uh, he used to train in kendo, but he kept it separate. He kept the fact that he was going to a, a Zen center and his kendo training uh, apart. He never really discussed. Uh, with anybody within his kendo group that he was actually a, a Zen teacher at, an, at another Zen center. But he said that, he, he's laughing, he goes, yeah, he goes, a lot of times uh, young men would come into the uh, the kendo group and, you know, tell everybody that they're a Zen student at so-and-so place. And all the other students would go, ooh, ah, you know, because being a Zen student in a karate uh, club center or one of the martial arts centers sort of is telling everybody your dedication to the Japanese cultural interpretative centers and he would laugh at that and say look you know he goes it has been well proven that none of these martial arts actually mean anything and that none of these martial arts are superior to any other martial arts and in fact you know a good mixed martial arts um, fighter will easily defeat uh, most martial artists. In fact, he was saying all oh, martial artists don't stand a chance against even a, a decent street fighter. And that I agree with. That's been proven over and over again. Uh, there's many videos on the YouTube of uh, street fighters and mixed martial artists pretty much defeating all of the traditional karate and um, uh, various martial arts schools throughout the uh, Far East in China. But getting back to the point, um, he was laughing, saying that a lot of times the uh, the kind of same attitudes that you would find in the um, karate clubs does seem to be the same attitudes you're finding in the Zen centers. Which is one of the biggest reasons why he, he left as well, because he said he just got to the point that if you don't tow the, the, the current thinking of the current regime within the Zen Center, you're, you get kicked out. You get isolated and singled out as a problem, and then you get picked on. And that was his story, which I won't go into any more detail about that. But it's not an uncommon story. I have heard the same story over and over again from other Zen students who realized that they were getting themselves involved in a cult. They were getting themselves involved with arrogant teachers, with arrogant students, and in this prideful lineage nonsense, which had nothing to do with Zen. And in fact, when I started asking them, well, what did you actually learn? They would actually think about it for a bit and they would say, well, you know, I don't think I learned anything. I don't think that I learned any Zen whatsoever. And I said, okay, so the meditations and the Zazen, they go, well, you know, that was an interesting experience, but is it Zen? Well, that's a very good question. Is it Zen? Now, again, this is where we get into the, you know, what, what my teacher says. My teacher says, well, this is nothing more than the church lady saying, my pastor says, my pastor says. It, it's all cult thinking. It's all cult brainwashing is what ends up being said. And this cult thinking and cult brainwashing tends to be taken as Zen, which is ridiculous because I, I see it all over the place on the internet, These, especially on YouTube. Nothing more than these young men and sometimes these older men who are sort of the vanguards of this 
uh, karate club version of Zen. All they're doing is they, they shave their heads or they got a short haircut and they got on their Japanese style robes and they got on their Japanese magic bib, the Rakasu. And they're telling everybody, oh, how great sitting Zazen is. Although, you know, how difficult and, and how, you know, all the things that have to go on when they're sitting Zazen, all the trials and tribulations. And then they kind of go on about, you know, what their teacher said and what their lineage says. And uh, they go on and maybe, maybe throw some Buddha quotes in there. And they try to really impress upon you that they are Zen, that they speak Zen. But if you pay careful attention and really look at what they're having to say, it is nothing more than a display of arrogance. And there's not a single drop of Zen in anything that they say. And this is shocking to those that actually pay attention at the disarray and the complete chaos of what has become of Zen in America. Nothing more than just petty cults. Nothing more than just men trying to find younger men to bamboozle to give them money to come and sit in their Zen centers, to come and participate in their Zen karate club. That's all it is. So what do you do? Do you, do you want to believe anything I have to say? What do you do? What do you do about any of this stuff? I have certainly attempted to bring out what Zen really is, and I have certainly attempted to bring some illumination as into what these Zen karate clubs are actually engaged into. And for my effort, I have been certainly rewarded. Of course, you know, you would think that people would want to talk to me. Oh, well, let's talk to this guy. Let's find out what he's really saying here. Maybe there's something of value in it. And of course, you know, you would expect that I would get tons of email because I certainly post my email address in every single video. And of course, you would think that people would want to, you know, ask me questions and find out, well, why do I say what I say? What, you know, what's going on here? Well, I'll tell you what has actually happened. None of that has happened. No emails. No questions. Nobody really replies other than the fact, you're wrong, you're deluded. That's all I see in the comments are these one-liners, mostly from these brainwashed young men who are engaged in these Japanese karate club Zen style cultural interpretative centers. They have no concept of what they are saying because they think that defending the honor of their teacher, their Roshi, is Zen. It's what they have to do. This is Karate Kid Part 10 or whatever movie they're on now. This is what has become of American Zen. And if you're shaking your head at it, yeah, you should. Because it's horrible. You would have thought, well, you know, Zen has been in America since about the 19... It's about 1950s, going into the 60s. Buddhism has been in the America since about the 1860s. So, basically 70 years for Zen. You would think that something would have developed out of it, other than these petty cults run by these foolish, arrogant men. You would think that Zen would have taken on a more Western flair, a more Western cultural appearance, but no. These men kept it into this Japanese cultural interpretative view, which is not even Japanese anymore. It's just more of whatever they think it is, whatever they want it to be. And it's become nothing more than petty cults to more or less make money, to brainwash young men into believing that these men are holy and special, that these men are, are all oh, these men are Zen masters, which, <laughs> they're anything but that. So what do you do? I went out and made some YouTube videos to go over and 
write some articles and of course for my efforts I am roundly attacked by the defenders of these men the defenders of these so-called lineages you know and then when I even lay open to them of how false and petty their lineage is and how non-zen everything they say is I might as well be talking to a zombie they can't hear me they got their fingers in their ear and going la 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 but that seems to be typically what's going on in the American culture to begin with. You know, you know, there's fingers in the ears and la la la, I can't hear you, and off down the path of doom they walk. It is frustrating and sad all at the same time to, to help. But yet, you know, a lot of people have asked me, they said, well, then why continue? I mean, if they can't hear and if they won't hear you, why continue? And the answer to that is because one of you might, one of you might hear me, even accidentally take your finger out of the ear and, and something, maybe one word will get in. But that might be enough, might be enough to wake you up, might be enough to get you to question yourself, question what you're doing. Even if it's for one tenth of a second that you question what you're doing, that's enough. That's enough of a reason why for me to continue. And it may be that in this lifetime for you there is no hope but maybe in the next lifetime there is and maybe there's something I have said or something that was said to you that will take root that will germinate and spring forward and maybe not now but maybe in years to come something will spring forward out of all of this I don't know but I won't stop I'll keep doing what I'm doing here regardless. What else do I have to do? What else am I going to go do? Am I going to go watch TV? Am I going to go play computer games? Am I going to go to movies? Am I going to go drinking with my buddies? No, I ain't going to do any of that stuff. That's, that's all delusion. That's all meaningless, hubris delusion. Why, why waste any moment even talking about that stuff? And it has no meaning. There's no wisdom... There's no benefit in those things. You were born in this human body. Out of all of the things you could have been reborn as in this vast universe of phenomenal arisings, here you are. That is a precious moment. That is a precious gift. A gift of untold value. To be able to realize what you are, to awaken to the truth to know the Buddha Dharma yourself, to flow within the Buddha nature, truly extend beyond this phenomenal rising, is a gift beyond anything imaginable. And yet you squander it. Why? I will say this, though, for those that did go to the Zen karate clubs and got mixed up with those guys, there was, and there's probably still is, a spark of awakening within all of you. Something in you already knows. And I can already tell you that is your future enlightenment talking to you. And as the future enlightenment preaching to you. And somewhere inside of you, even if it was just for one tenth of a second, you've heard that. And it led you to these karate clubs, these Zen karate clubs, where you've Attempted to want it, wanting to hear that again, wanting to understand what you just, what's happening. So it's there. It's still there within you. You just have to wake up from the delusion that these Zen centers are not in there, for, they're not there for your benefit. It's not to say that they can't change, it's not to say that the teachers can't understand what they're doing. It's just to say that there's a lot of defilement there. There's a lot of corruption there. And yes, they are. They tell me, oh, we're well aware of our problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're not going to change any of it because it's not within their financial models to change it. They don't care about you, the student. They only care about their bottom line, which is their bills, their fun, their prestige, and their ego. So what would a true Zen center look like? That's a good question. A true Zen center 
in my view, would be pretty much just a empty meeting room. There would be no Buddha statues. There would be no Japanese uh, cultural um, interpretative uh, items. Put out some chairs, some benches, some cushions if you wanted to sit. Um, maybe burn a little bit of incense just so that give it give a nice pleasant smell to the room. Um, and then we would all come together and we would speak about the Buddha and we would speak about what hinders you from entering into the Buddha way, into the Buddha nature. And then I would have senior students talk about their entering into the Buddha nature, into the Buddha flow, and how that was for them. And to give you encouragement to keep trying, to keep looking at your own defilements, to keep looking at your own hindrances, and to bring them forward and confess them. As to, to confessing them then brings them into your forefront and therefore you can defeat them and therefore you can vanquish them. Therefore you can burn them out, burn them away. And that's what I would do. I would keep doing this until all of your defilements are gone, until all of your hindrances are removed. And there's nothing stopping you from the true open door of Buddhahood. That is what I would do. They would be open to everybody, irregardless of who you are, where you come from, your race, your sexual preference, I don't care. It would be open to anybody from any level. There would be no ranks. There would be no robes. There would be no colored uniforms or bibs. There would be no need for a haircut. Come as you are, however you are, however you want to be. There's no seniority. You want to speak, speak. You want to listen, listen. You want to sit, sit. You want to talk, talk. That's what I would do. Yeah, it's not traditional Japanese culture. But I don't live in Japan. And I got a feeling neither do you. Your spirituality is yours. I've already spoken to you about the Zen Daddy. Go back and watch my video about that. You don't need a Zen daddy. You don't need somebody to tell you what to do with your life. What to, how to be spiritual. That they're going to take you to some sort of spiritual salvation or spiritual realization. If you believe these men who tell you that, you're a fool. And these men are fool for even saying things like this. Only you can bring yourself to any sort of spiritual realization. Nobody's going to do it for you. No teacher is going to practice for you. No teacher is going to reach within you and show you your own defilements. Only you can reach within you to show you your own defilements. And here you are within this human body. It is the most perfect opportunity to achieve the Buddhahood, to completely relinquish all of your clingings, your hindrances, your attachments. This is the time. This is it. What are you waiting for? You've already come this far. Maybe you got yourself involved in one of these karate club Zen centers. Take the next step and go beyond that. Don't just stop there. Don't just think it's good enough. Don't just think that this whatever your teacher is saying is the final and absolute, because I can tell you right now, it is not. Experience Zen for yourself. Don't just have your teacher tell you that this is Zen. Experience it. Know it. Don't waste your time 